Daniel 4. Beast for seven years. The books of Daniel and Revelation are full of matter which concerns every one of us. We should study these books and let the Lord God of Israel communicate truth to us so that we may be able to communicate the truth to others who live in these last days. The Lord would have his people learn of Jesus. God forbid that those for whom he is wrought shall become high-minded and be left to their own way as was the king of Babylon. Chapter 4 Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. Daniel 4 verse 2 In many testimonies, I have stated that wealthy men, who have their Lord's money, will be moved by the Spirit of God to open doors for the advancement of the truth in large cities. They will use their entrusted means to prepare the way of the Lord, to make straight in the desert a highway for our God. How great are His signs, and how mighty are His wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and His dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house, and flourishing in my palace. Daniel 4 verse 4 In the providence of God, Nebuchadnezzar was given ample opportunity to ascribe to the Lord the glory for the splendor of his reign. And for a time after the vision of the great image, he acknowledged God as supreme. Falling back into idolatrous habits, he was, again, by the miraculous deliverance of the three Hebrews from the fiery furnace, led to acknowledge that God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. But once more, the king perverted the warnings God had given him, and turned aside from the path of humility to follow the imaginations of his naturally proud heart. Thinking that his kingdom should be more extensive and powerful than any that would follow, he made great additions to the city of Babylon and gave himself up to a life of pleasure and self-glorification. Of this time he himself says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house, and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Daniel 4 verse 7 Modern spiritualism and the forms of ancient witchcraft and idol worship, all having communion with the dead as their vital principle, are founded upon that first lie by which Satan beguiled Eve in Eden. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as gods. Genesis 3 verses 4 and 5 Alike based upon falsehood and perpetuating the same, they are alike from the father of lies. The Hebrews were expressly forbidden to engage, in any manner, in pretended communion with the dead. God closed this door effectually when he said, the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Ecclesiastes 9 verses 5 and 6 His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. Psalm 146 verse 4 And the Lord declared to Israel, the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul, and will cut him off from among his people. Leviticus 20 verse 6 The familiar spirits were not the spirits of the dead, but evil angels, the messengers of Satan. Ancient idolatry, which, as we have seen, comprises both worship of the dead and pretended communion with them, is declared by the Bible to have been demon worship. The Apostle Paul, in warning his brethren against participating, in any manner, in the idolatry of their heathen neighbors, says, The things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, and not to God, and I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20
The psalmist, speaking of Israel, says that they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and in the next verse, he explains that they sacrificed them unto the idols of Canaan. Psalm 106 verses 37 and 38 In their supposed worship of dead men, they were in reality worshipping demons. But at the last Daniel came in before me whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the Spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the Spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Daniel 4 verse 9 the dream given him was very explicit, but the magicians, the astrologers, the soothsayers, and the Chaldeans could not make known to the king his dream, or tell the interpretation thereof. Those who do not love and fear God cannot understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. They cannot approach unto the throne of him who dwelleth in light unapproachable, and the things of God are to them mysteries of mysteries. But the king bears testimony to the fact that the servants of God understand the things of God. Daniel told the dream and the interpretation thereof before the king. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all. The beast of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. Daniel 4 verse 13 His ear hears the secret whisperings and every secret thing is to be brought into judgment. All need to learn that the heavenly watcher is acquainted with the children of men. If men forget this, there is danger of a spirit of selfishness and self-exaltation entering their work. These principles practiced are not only detrimental to all within the sphere of their action, but will lead to a development of character so objectionable that its possessor cannot find a place among the redeemed. He that sitteth in the heavens requires that a different spirit shall control his workers. And he cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree, and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, and the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts and the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. Daniel 4 verse 17 When Satan declared to Christ, The kingdom and glory of the world are delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it, he stated what was true only in part, and he declared it to serve his own purpose of deception. Satan's dominion was that wrested from Adam, but Adam was the vicegerent of the Creator. His was not an independent rule. The earth is God's, and he has committed all things to his Son. Adam was to reign subject to Christ. When Adam betrayed his sovereignty into Satan's hands, Christ still remained the rightful king. Thus the Lord had said to King Nebuchadnezzar, The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Daniel 4 verse 17 Satan can exercise his usurped authority only as God permits. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation. 
but thou art able, for the Spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. Daniel 4 verse 19 Every new truth has made its way against hatred and opposition. Those who were blessed with its light were tempted and tried. The Lord gives a special truth for the people in an emergency. Who dare refuse to publish it? He commands his servants to present the last invitation of mercy to the world. They cannot remain silent, except at the peril of their souls. Christ's ambassadors have nothing to do with consequences. They must perform their duty and leave results with God. The tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown, and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher, and an holy one coming down from heaven, and saying, Hew the tree down, and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. Daniel 4 verse 23 if man abuses his entrusted treasures, God can scatter faster than man can gather. Man may have brilliant intellect, he may be rich in the possession of natural endowments. But these are all given him by God, his Maker. God can remove the gift of reason, and in a moment, man will become as Nebuchadnezzar, degraded to the level of the beasts of the field. This, God does, because man acts as though his wisdom and power had been gotten independently of him. This is the interpretation, O King, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King. Daniel 4 verse 24 We are living in the last days of this earth's history, and we may be surprised at nothing in the line of apostasies and denials of the truth. Unbelief has now come to be a fine art, which men work at, to the destruction of their souls. There is constant danger of there being shams in pulpit preachers, whose lies contradict the words they speak, but the voice of warning and of admonition will be heard as long as time shall last. And those who are guilty of transactions that should never be entered into, when reproved or counseled through the Lord's appointed agencies, will resist the message and refuse to be corrected. They will go on, as did Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar, until the Lord takes away their reason, and their hearts become unimpressible. The Lord's word will come to them, but if they choose not to hear it, the Lord will make them responsible for their own ruin. That they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling place shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Daniel 4 verse 25 In spite of the warning he received, Nebuchadnezzar went on in his own strength, till God took from him the talent of wisdom, that he might be led to see and acknowledge that the God of Israel was able to create and to destroy. The kings who succeeded him failed to profit by his experience, and the kingdom of Babylon passed away because, in their prosperity, her rulers forgot God, and ascribed her honor and glory to human achievement. So today, when men forget God and refuse to obey His law, they are humiliated. God tests them, and if they do not humble their hearts and confess their sins, they receive the penalty of transgression. 
and whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquillity. Daniel 4 verse 27 Instead of being a protector of men, Babylon became a proud and cruel oppressor. The words of inspiration, picturing the cruelty and greed of rulers in Israel, reveal the secret of Babylon's fall, and of the fall of many another kingdom since the world began. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool, ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Ezekiel 34 verses 3 and 4 Did Daniel's faithful recognition of God before kings, princes, and statesmen detract from his influence? No. Read his firm, bold testimony, and then follow his example. Let the clear-cut testimony, like a sharp two-edged sword, cut to the right and to the left. Make appeals that will bring foolish, wandering minds back to God. After Daniel had given Nebuchadnezzar God's warning in regard to self-exaltation, he said to him, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be accepted unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Daniel 4 verse 29 For months, the judgment of God lingered. But instead of being led to repentance by this forbearance, the king indulged his pride until he lost confidence in the interpretation of the dream, and jested at his former fears. The custom of offering praise to men is one that results in great evil. One praises another, and thus men are led to feel that glory and honor belong to them. They begin to feel, as did Nebuchadnezzar, when he walked around the palaces of his kingdom. God had warned the king of his danger in thus taking the glory to himself, but he did not heed the warning, and God sent his threatened judgment upon him, and Nebuchadnezzar was humbled. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power, and for the honor of my majesty? Daniel 4 verse 30 God designed that man's intellectual powers should be held as a gift from his Maker, and should be employed in the service of truth and righteousness. But when pride and ambition are cherished, and men exalt their own theories above the Word of God, then intelligence can accomplish greater harm than ignorance. Thus the false science of the present day, which undermines faith in the Bible, will prove as successful in preparing the way for the acceptance of the papacy, with its pleasing forms, as did the withholding of knowledge in opening the way for its aggrandizement in the Dark Ages. But let us consider, what reason has man to be puffed up? What reason has he to be proud of his religion? He has nothing but that which he has received from God the Redeemer. Learning of the very highest order cannot purchase heaven for any of us. The man possessing large estates and lofty mansions, who walks the earth, with all the independence of Nebuchadnezzar as he walked in the palace of the king of Babylon, can claim the right to heaven only through humble obedience to all of God's commandments. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king, Nebuchadnezzar to thee it is spoken, The kingdom is departed from thee. Daniel 4 verse 31 Nothing is hidden from God says the true witness, I know thy works. Every word that we speak is heard and recorded by the majesty of heaven, who is declared, By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Could our eyes be opened, could we see the heavenly watcher by our side, listening to the words we utter, we would strive to control our tongues, 
for we would realize that we were speaking in the hearing of the heavenly universe. If they are left unrepented of, we shall meet once more the bitter spirit, the revengeful feelings, and the angry words. For God shall bring every work into judgment, with every secret thing, whether it be good, or whether it be evil. Oh that men, instead of making the mistakes of others the subject of their conversation, would turn their critical glances inward, seeking power from on high to guard well their words, that in the judgment, they might stand justified in the sight of God. And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. Daniel 4 verses 32 and 33 Nebuchadnezzar did not profit by the warnings he received. Only through severest discipline did he learn the lesson that the Lord, and not man, is ruler, and that God's kingdom endures forever. Only after passing through long years of humiliation did the king of Babylon learn that it was not his scepter, but the scepter of him whose kingdom is everlasting, that held supreme sway over the affairs of the nations. For seven years, Nebuchadnezzar was an astonishment to all his subjects. For seven years, he was humbled before all the world. Then his reason was restored, and, looking up in humility to the God of heaven, he recognized the divine hand in his chastisement. And at the end of the days I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored Him that liveth for ever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom is from generation to generation. Daniel 4 verse 34 The chastening that came upon the king of Babylon wrought reformation in his heart, and transformed him in character. He now understands God's purpose in humiliating him. In this chastisement, he recognizes the divine hand. Before his humiliation, he was tyrannical in his dealings with others, but now the fierce, overbearing monarch is changed into a wise and compassionate ruler. Before his humiliation, he defied and blasphemed the God of heaven, but now he humbly acknowledges the power of the Most High, and earnestly seeks to promote the happiness of his subjects. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Daniel 4 verses 36 and 37 The once proud monarch had become a humble child of God. The tyrannical, overbearing ruler, a wise and compassionate king. God's purpose, that the greatest kingdom in the world should show forth his praise, was now fulfilled. This public proclamation, in which Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged the mercy and goodness and authority of God, was the last act of his life recorded in sacred history. The members of our churches need to be converted, that they may understand what the love of Jesus means, the love that he revealed in his life of meekness and lowliness. Profession without practice is of no value in God's sight. Position cannot gain for us salvation. Nebuchadnezzar was the ruler of the greatest of earth's kingdoms but his greatness did not give him acceptance with God. In a moment his power was taken from him. 
Links to all texts are available in the description box below.
Bye.